So in the 19th century, there are these two guys, Alexander Campbell and Barton Stone. Has anyone heard of these two? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so these two guys decided they were fed up with all the divisions that were in the church. They saw all these denominations and thought, this is not what the original church was supposed to be. So they set out to unify the church, to, re to restore the apostolic church that it talks about in Acts. They focused intently on the Acts of the Apostles and the Pauline letters. They wanted guidance on structure, on what the church was supposed to be about. Back when Jesus had just risen, back when Peter stood up and addressed the people in Jerusalem. And that's a great idea in theory. I love that idea. I love the idea of going back to what the Bible says, but I think Alexander Campbell and Barton Stone made two kind of critical errors. First of all, if you read any books about Alexander Campbell, the one I read this past semester, he is quoted saying that the Old Testament and the Gospel wasn't relevant for shaping this church. I don't know about you, but that causes something in me to reject that. I don't know about you, but I kind of like the gospel. <laughs> the gospel is kind of what I hold to. So reading that made me feel uneasy. And they also believed, if, they went, if you went through the movement and you read the history of it, it got to a point where they believed not only were they restoring the apostolic church, but they were the one true church. That everyone who would come before them was wrong. That nothing they did was correct in the sight of God. And so you're sitting there and asking, why is this UMC kid who grew up Methodist, cradle Methodist, talking about a church of Christ, church? <clears throat> well, I spent the past semester learning about church history. I spent the whole semester reading this huge book, probably that big, about 2,000 years of the history of our church. Not something that doesn't matter to us, not something that wasn't a part of who we are. It's our story. And I spent time reading this. And you know what I realized? The church is messed up, y'all. Right. Yeah. I was reading this book and going through and thinking, is this really what I want to represent for the rest of my life? Am I sure that I want to go into a ministry where people fight each other all the time? Where in the Fourth Crusade, they went into Constantinople. Y'all, Constantinople was a center of Christianity at that time. They went in and attacked their own brothers and sisters. Is that the kind of church I want to be a part of? Is that what I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life? Am I supposed to defend a church where in the Protestant Reformation, some people decided they wanted to go even more extreme, even more radical, and then thought that the Protestant Reformation was wrong? So I want to keep representing a church that over and over throughout history looks back on what it's done and says, no, we didn't do that right. We can do it better. And I'm right and you're wrong. Is that the kind of church I want to represent? And so fast forward to present day, here I am, this cradle United Methodist kid going to a Church of Christ University. No one told me it was a Church of Christ University. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a fun experience. So for two years, I sat in these classrooms. I paid a lot of money to sit in these classrooms and not learn a thing. Because in my head, I thought, I'm right, you're wrong. In my head, I thought, there's no way they can teach me anything new because I don't know if they're right. Everything I've known from here on out has got to be the right thing, and I will do the same thing I've always done, because that always works. <laughs> and so I sat in these expensive classes, bought expensive textbooks, never read them, and thought, there's no way I'm going to get anything out of this education. And then about a year ago, I realized I was wasting my money and decided, you know what, I'll listen. I will see what these people have to say to me, because maybe, just maybe, if I'm lucky, they might say something decent. And what I realized, guys, we are not so different. Yeah. I sat in these classes and had my mind blown and realized, oh my gosh, i had been sitting thinking we were all so different, that there was no way I could agree with these people, but they're all saying the same thing that I'm believing. They're all saying the same thing that I'm preaching, that I'm reading about. They're preaching love. That's the gospel, y'all. That's what they're talking about. That's what they're telling me. And so I sat there, and I'm like, why? Why do we disagree? And I talked to my professors, and I asked them, what's the point? Why does it matter if I use instruments and you sing a cappella? 
Why do we disagree about things, things that are so insignificant that divide congregations, that tear apart denominations? What's the point? Aren't we all here to just preach the love of the gospel? Isn't that the point of Christianity? Isn't that the point of the church? Why are we divided? Does it make any sense? I think if we took the time to really listen, to really sit down and talk to one another, to listen to each other, I don't want to talk over someone, I don't want to hear someone just get, trying to get their point across and talking over me and we just end up in a screen match. I want to listen to other people's stories. I want to hear why. Why are you a Baptist? Why are you a Church of Christ? Why do you believe in this? Why does it become so part of you that it is your very essence? If we sit down, y'all, and listen to each other's stories, I think amazing things could happen. Mm -hmm. If we try to sit down and understand where everyone else is coming from, that's where I think a miracle could happen. Because that's the point of Pentecost, y'all. That's the miracle, is that everyone understood the story. That Peter told this story for all the nations to hear, for all the nations to understand the story of Christ, the greatest story of love ever told. And that's the foundation for the early church. It's not talking about, uh, should you be baptized first and then accept Christ, or accept Christ first and then be baptized. It's about understanding. That's the foundation. That's what the church should be looking to. It's not about... And if we're going to restore Christianity, if we're going to restore this church that we love so much, it's got to be not just about Methodists or Baptists or Disciples of Christ or Roman Catholics. I mean, Christianity as a whole is we're going to restore every single bit, the whole universal church. We have got to look at Acts 2 in a way of understanding each other. It's about the Holy Spirit, yes, but it's also about communication and listening to each other's stories. And so I'm gonna to read to you. I'm sure y'all know the story of the Tower of Babel. It's from Genesis 11, and it's one of my favorite stories because I used to have a little children's picture book and it had all the cool pictures and they built a huge tower and I loved it. But the Tower of Babel has this one verse in it. I want you to listen. And when I read the word language, I don't want you to think language in a literal sense. I don't want you to think English or German or Greek or whatever language. I want you to listen to this verse and take language in a not so literal sense. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. And they said to each other, come, let us build ourselves a city, a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. And the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they had begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible. If one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing will be impossible for us. The word of God for the people of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.